Are we gonna eat a weed dinner? <laughs> yes. Hey, it's Saturday morning, our day of rest. Hey, but the chillers still gotta eat. What's the matter? You wanna stir? He wants to so stir. So we've decided to go get kind of a break from the uh, pork and stir. eggs and make raspberry cobbler. With and, ice cream. And homemade ice cream. That's our breakfast this morning. I would say that's a nice break. Yes. Hey, beauty. What? People are loving your channel. So there it is, guys, live. How many views? 911 views and 114 comments. So I told her, there, here comes a movie star when she woke up. So we appreciate you guys going and watching it. An exciting day today, guys. I've been looking forward to it for a while. Tonight, we're gonna eat weeds for dinner. Welcome to the best breakfast ever. Woo! Do you like it? You're funny. What do you think, you like it? Nice to uh, take a break from the norm. So we're about to go outside and look for some uh, weeds around our house so that we can make dinner. And I have this product that we're using. It's, the product is called Lime Armor and we purchased it at Montana Pharmacy and we'll leave a link in the description. We bought it on our own. They did not pay us to say any of this. Okay, took a little nap this afternoon, feeling good. The weed guy is here. Where are you gonna put it on me? I'm all covered up. I'm gonna just rub a little bit. Man, that smells so good. All right, so I'm gonna try this one. It's the uh, balm. Okay. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my neck. It actually doesn't smell bad. It's just essential oils. Man, he's got all kinds of cool stuff back. More than I imagined, man. This guy is serious. He's coming over prepared. Smell like I it. thought we were just gonna go over and chop some weeds and pop them in our mouth, but no, he's for real. Okay, so I should probably stop standing over here talking and go help the man. Hey, man. Hi. I'm Justin. Hey, Justin. I'd shake your hand, but your hands yeah, are full. full. Can I help you? Uh, sure. <laughs> are we gonna eat a weed dinner? <laughs> Yes. Okay, I've been the telling them. Answer is yes. <laughs> I've been and they're saying, are we gonna have to? Yeah. But are our are, are kids gonna like this? Yes. Okay. No. Yeah. First they're thing not, is it's gotta <laughs> taste good, and then it's gotta be good for yeah. us and the environment and and something from the wild. So you eat something wild every day. Yes. So do you actually do that? You eat something wild every I day? I do for years okay. now. Many, What's the wildest years. thing you've eaten? Ooh, the wildest thing I've eaten. I think wild Gosh, that's a I wild strawberries, I maybe. Eat an ant. Ants? That would be pretty wild <laughs> to eat an ant. <laughs> have you eaten an ant, Mark? I have eaten ants. Although okay. I am vegetarian, <laughs> but I make an, uh, an exception for insects sometimes. <laughs> it can be kind of a, unavoidable, really. <laughs> Ready? Okay, so Mark says we're gonna do an introduction. Yeah, and it's really great that we have this example here of a nice family, right? A family of people. And just like people have families, plants have families, and other forms of life have families, mushrooms or birds or you name it. And oftentimes, just like in people families, there's going to be similarities amongst the plants that are related to each other. Pretty much almost every plant that we're looking at is edible. It's more the exception than the rule. The things would not be edible of the plants that we're looking at. Now we're outside, we're looking at this uh, kind of the stable area and interface with uh, the land that's kind of right by the house. You've got a lot of these kind of very common what people would call weeds oftentimes. Emerson was known to say that a weed is a plant that you don't know the use for. Another example of a definition for a weed would be a plant that's in the wrong place or in a place that we don't want. But um, just to be clear, most weeds are useful and uh, it's more the exception that they would be something that would be poisonous than the rule. Now the first thing we're gonna look at is this plant with the beautiful yellow flowers here. 
and I'm sure that your dad grew up eating this. Really? So do you know mm -mm. what no. it is? No. So I bet that you will recognize the common name for this, which is a creasy green. Oh yeah. You heard of creasy yeah. greens, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for best results, harvest the greens for before it flowers. But he said you can actually eat this entire thing. This family in the places where it gets cold is one of the major ones for multivitamin type of effect. So to get your iron and to get your calcium and to get your magnesium and vitamin A and vitamin C. This is the family that is going to provide a lot of those nutrients. It's not just edible, it's incredible, right? Because I like to say that there's this range, right? There's the edible and incredible, <laughs> And then there's the edible but forgettable, yeah. or edible for survival. And this yeah. is definitely on the edible and incredible side. Okay, here we go. Spicy, so be right. prepared for that. So, is it not like, like really? it won't okay. persist. Okay, okay. It's not like a hot pepper, but you'll just get a little bit kind of at the front end there. Yeah, it's not bad. Now he calls, he calls this botanical bling because it spices up a salad. It just makes it pop. Just a good look, right? Uh huh. That would be interesting on a cake. Right? They're really good, good on salads. Yeah. The pop comes at the end. Yeah. yeah. A real nice spice Yeah. at the end. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, now I've been calling you the weed guy, but that's probably not good. You probably want to slap me upside the head with, for that one. No. What do, what do you like? To, what are you? Ethnobotanist. Yes, or that's much better. That's much more professional. Mark Williams, the <laughs> ethnobiologist. <laughs> yes, there you go. And be a new one for you is this little one. Yeah, I don't know what flowers. to do with yes. that. Yes, I was wondering what that is. Okay. So this is the next plant. And um, this plant is from the buckwheat family. Some names would be knotweed, another name would be smartweed, another name would be ladies' thumb. As some botanical bling, you can put these flowers onto a cake or in a salad. And uh, once they mature, it could be a grain like buckwheat. The common name for it is spice bush. Hey, come smell this, guys. This is what I call a scratch and sniff plant. So you see where I'm scratching it. Go ahead and smell that area, okay? Mm, it smells good. Yeah? Oh, good. Did you smell it? I did. So good. Okay, we got some spice bush here. We're going to turn the stems, or use the stems to make some tea. Taking a break in the cool water. Yeah, it's pretty nice and cool. That's where I want to live. Ready? Steady? Yeah. This is wild carrot, also known as Queen Anne slice. But it looks very much like the poison hemlock, not like the water hemlock that we've talked about already. Like if you look up close, you can see yeah, little hairs hairy. on there. Whereas the poison hemlock would be smooth. And oftentimes hummus will have parsley in it. Instead of using parsley, we'll use this wild carrot. This is um, the daylily. It's been consumed for thousands of years in Asia, and actually multiple parts of it, but certainly the flower is going to be super choice. But to be clear, not all lilies are edible, so you need to make sure you have the daylily. Here's our snack. Okay, try one. Oh, wow, you were quick. Good job. Super yummy, huh? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now I will say it's kind of interesting when you think about more mainstream food really. stuff, yeah. right? That there Try are it. allergies, and you know people. It's are not so good. With, uh, That's actually pretty good. Almost a little sweet. Thank you. Now you can eat it. Try don't you try it? Um, the I know why between I didn't this one and the water hemlock. Okay. And we have a bunch of wine berries coming in, but they are not ready yet. Maybe another month. This is honewort. Honewort. We're going to use it. canadensis and use it as a flavoring herb, like a lot of things from the carrot and celery family. A thing that I'm going to tend to do when I'm harvesting is to leave the dirty part, the root part, just out in the field, right? So then it makes your work easier once you get it inside. You can eat any of them, but I consider the white pine to be a little bit more choice. It has a little bit more mild flavor, but they all have vitamin C and we can add that to the spice bush bag. So you have no problem surviving out here as far as food is concerned. Probably. The real thing when you're talking about plants for food is that you can get plenty of vitamins and plenty of minerals 
and to some degree especially if it's fruiting time of year carbohydrates the protein can be a little bit challenging you can certainly get some from things like hickory and chestnuts but really mushrooms edible mushrooms is when you're going to be able to provide all your food from the wild is getting uh, your protein from them it does mm -hmm. oh wow what is it? Mm, this is black birch, and the compound in there is related to the flavor of wintergreen. Top raspberries. Pretty nice. awesome right here. That would be great to pick a few of these to put into our dessert. Now the fun begins. Look at that. Woohoo! Got uh, day lilies, we got Queen Anne's lace, we got black birch and spice bush and creasy drink. Yeah. Got a little bit of cumin as a spice that's going in with the chickpeas and the garlic. Here we're gonna be making kind of a typical hummus which has chickpeas and garlic and cumin. But where we're gonna diverge from the typical hummus is in using wood sorrel, oxalis is the genus of wood sorrel, and then the Queen Anne's lace, Dacus Corota, are going to be our wild elements of the hummus. And so the miso is going to make our hummus into a probiotic thing, an ornamental thing, yeah. As well going in here, Oftentimes I'll do pine needles more as a cold or warm infusion because they have vitamin C and the vitamin C can be denatured from boiling water. I'm adding in the black birch twigs. So let that steep. Yeah, this is lamb's quarters. Oh, that's beautiful. Nasturtium. Good to be us right now. Look at this spread. And it didn't take that long. What, 30 minutes? Yeah. A raw salad. Yeah. Pesto. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hummus. Mm-hmm. With botanical bling. Mm-hmm. And what's this? That's a salsa with honewort as the greens and nasturtiums as the flowers. Okay. Ooh, wow. okay. We have a These are terrible. They're like... They before where I like... The chillers aren't going cray cray over it, but this this looks awful good. Now here you asking for the recipe on that hummus, getting yeah. clarification on that one. It's good. It is so good. I think that's the best hummus I've ever tasted. Look guys, look, dessert. Is it good? Is it hot? Nice. Oh yeah, that's a hit, Mark. Okay. You got him. Oh, <laughs> it's hot. It's too hot. I'm gonna oh, it's too hot. <laughs> okay, so if somebody wants to start eating weeds themselves, where do they start? Start with the things right around your house. Start with dandelion. Start with chickweed. Start with lamb's quarters. And start with somebody that's really knowledgeable and can really show you what you don't know as much as what you need to learn. Are there any good uh, books or online resources? Lots of really great books. Lots of really great online resources. Kind of depends on where you are. But uh, the Peterson's Field Guide to Edible Wild Plants is great. The Encyclopedia of Edible Plants in North America by Francois Couplon is great. As far as online resources, Green Bean, Eat the Weeds, and um, also Wild Man Steve Brill are okay. some really great ones. And how do people find out more about you? If people want to find out more about me, they could go to the website botanyeveryday.com and also the website plantsandhealers.org. Thanks, man. I'll leave the links to those resources below in the description. Awesome.